Welcome everybody to the Social Share Club. I'm your host Travis and I've got a crazy show for you today. So many awesome guests and um, please invite your friends to the Social Share Club and other people that you feel would find this uh, group helpful. You know, We try to bring in uh, some amazing professionals and um, share with you their expertise. So without further ado, I'm going to bring in uh, my good friend, uh, R.L. Shaver, who we brought him on the show previously and wanted to give you some updates on what is going on in R.L.'s life. So R.L., if you want to kick us off. Um, yeah. Okay. My name is R.L. Shaver. I grew up in Southern West Virginia. I'm a uh, husband and a dad of two boys, two wild boys. Um, and I am, I do a number of things. I work for a software company. Um, I'm actually taking an early lunch to join for this. And uh, I also am an author and I wrote a book. Can you guys hear me okay? Is everything good? Yeah, everything's good, man. Okay. I wasn't sure if I was still testing or if I'm going on live. Um, so Carlos is in. Um, yeah. So I'm an author. I, my youngest son had six heart surgeries his first 18 months. Um, it was brutal. Uh, two and a half months old, he turned. My, my wife knew something was wrong because women are just great at that. And I am you know, played the dumb dad part to a T and thought everything was okay. And um, she took him to the doctor that morning. And anyway, long story short, um, she was like, babe, I think we need to go to the hospital. I was like, no, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. And she walks in and his lips had started turning blue. And so we rushed him to the hospital. And and they rush them from past events to children's. And then we get down to children's and they're like, hey, your son at two and a half months old is going to have an open heart surgery. And to make matters worse, it's not a corrective surgery. It's a temporary fix until he can get old enough. And um, it's just kind of like your work, your world kind of falls out from beneath you. you. Reach out to your friends, your mentors, your loved ones and say, hey, you know, my same was going through open heart surgery. And that was the start of our journey. Like that was, I mean, it wasn't the start of our journey, but it was the um, shocking intro, so to speak. And uh, we proceeded on. He had six heart surgeries, countless, um, six heart surgeries his first 18 months and countless uh, trips back and forth to the ER. And through that journey, like my faith was the big part. And it was the reason that I wrote the book was because um, I wanted to tell people that like as I walked through this journey, my faith not only guided me, but it gave me a weapon and a, and a battle to fight to say, hey, listen, my beliefs and everybody has their welcome to their beliefs. But for me, my beliefs are that God's promises are true, that he loves you, that he fights on your side. And um, I wanted to just fight with God to bring my, my son uh, to help. And he's healthy and whole now. He's seven years old. He's a little wild man. Um, he's in school right now. And uh, yeah, on top of that, I've been um, around the book. I've been starting to build out. Everybody says brand. I don't, I don't like the, the term brand. I've been trying to build out ways to get the message out. I know for some people who are actually in the midst of it, my book, um, this is a paperback. I'll hold it up so you can see it. Uh, my book, I've been told, is, is a little brutal because it's pretty honest. And so for some of the people who are actually going through it, they're, they're like, this is just too much. So I've been trying to, I've been putting together a series of blog posts that I'm probably going to spin into a, um, either a second book or like a free PDF or just something for parents who are going through stuff and anybody who wants it, but just something to give somebody something that's a tactical battle plan. So they don't have to deal with, you know, all the details, the heart surgeries, the brutalness, all that stuff, you know? Um, this is the other one. Also, been continued to jump on a number of podcasts. This is the hardback copy, and that's Samuel when he was four. Uh, yeah, good. So it's not shiny. Um, and yeah, I've been jumping on podcasts um, and just trying to parlay this into getting the message out to as many people as possible and reach as many people as possible. So that's it. Travis, any other questions? Anything else? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty awesome stuff. You've come a long way and uh, you found yourself on this uh, media campaign trail. If you want to talk about, uh, you know, your experiences and getting in front of some of the different uh, people that are interviewing you, and I, I think that would be helpful. You know, even removing, you know, 
seeds of doubt, I know that it's something that you found a lot of power in. So. Yeah, seeds of doubt in the, like from the book perspective or seeds of doubt from the marketing perspective? Uh, dealer's choice, man. Whatever you feel like has been the most impactful for you. And dude, there's not been a part that's not been impactful. It's just, um, should I do both real quick? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, I mean, really the struggle with the book, um, like in the, in the actually doing, living out my son having all this stuff, the struggle was, you know, against doubt. And, um, I learned very early on that, um, what I, the people I surround myself with, the stories that I read, and the words that come out of my mouth completely dictate what my mind's going. And the words that come out of my mouth are the most crucial because, like, if I'm sitting there and dwelling on thoughts and, and speaking, well, I don't know if he's going to make it. I don't know if he's going to do okay. It's just, it crushes you. And it, that translates to anything, you know, whether you're running your own business or whatever. But then on the flip side, claiming the positive, laying claim to, for me, God's promises and saying, he's going to be okay. Um, God's word says it's true. He's going to be okay. He's going to be fine. You know, um, and just going through that. Um, and then as far as the, the media stuff, I mean, for me, it's been super, super easy because, um, first of all, I got the crap kicked out of me when all this happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, when you get, when you go through something like that, you're just like, uh, who cares what anybody thinks? I really don't care what anybody thinks. It's like, it's not important to me anymore. So it's just like, once you remove that, it's 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 just fun, you know? Reaching out to people, not doubting yourself. But I mean, even if you're not doing something that's like, if you're just doing something to, to earn a living and you're like, hey, listen, I'm passionate about eating food and I'm passionate about paying my rent. You know, if that's the direction you're going, if you're doing it, it's the right thing and you realize you're providing a service like dude believe in yourself you're so valuable as a person and the services you offer are so good don't hesitate one of my uh one of my good friends alona she just she's just taken that principle and just said hey i'm i'm gonna believe in myself she um ended up she's from the country of georgia which is ussr um and she's just built a brand around you know writing authoring and and writing books and just like anybody else hey i wanted to get this out there but she just has not taken no for an answer and she's shot big um i think the current phrasing is she shot she she shot her shot or she made her shot or whatever um but anyway she um she just inter interviewed a couple months back the prince of montenegro um she interviewed um royalty in a couple of different countries just by reaching out saying hey listen we have some mutual background i grew up in georgia i run a podcast i would love to talk to you and all these this royalty is like yeah we'd love to be on your show we'd love to talk about our country and like how often do you get to say something like that but it all comes down to like are you willing to believe in yourself and aim big you know one of the other things that i've seen in life is the lower you aim the harder it gets um when you aim for people that are just not there you know you're going to get stuff like just laziness and and not great interviews and you know, stuff like that. But if you aim for somebody who's like top tier, I mean, like, for example, if you like, if you're doing the podcast thing, like you're trying to get on podcasts and stuff, if you're on Joe Rogan, one of the good reasons that Joe Rogan's such a big podcaster is because when somebody comes to interview with him, he's done tons of research. He's dug into this person. He knows about them. He knows about their background. He knows about what they write. He knows about, you know, cross thoughts. He's just well educated. And that's what happens when you aim high. People are attracted to quality. But when you aim for good people, you're going to get good things back. If you aim for people, well, this person's got a small podcast. Maybe they'll have me on. You might get a terrible interview. You might get a waste of time. You might get ghosted, you know, stuff like that. So it's um, it's important to aim high. Yeah, man. Hey, we have uh, <clears throat> some, some other people coming on here. Uh, what is, uh, what's the best place that people can find you? Oh yeah, easy. RLshawver.com. You probably won't go to spell it, so I'll spell it up for you. It's R L S H A W V is in Victor E R dot com. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, uh wish you the best and I'm sure we'll be hearing from you uh very soon. Uh with that being said, I'm going to bring on my next guest, uh the wonderful Miss Tracy Napotnik. She has amazing experience in the uh, hair, uh, the hair industry, and is 
branching out into some other amazing areas as well. So I want to bring her on and say hi to Miss Tracy Napotnik. What's going on, Tracy? Let me uh, get you pinned up here. And let's see here. Bring Tracy on. Where are you at, Tracy? Hey, there's Tracy. What's going on, Trace? Hello. You didn't tell me I was supposed to bring my tissues. <laughs> Sorry, I was like crying. I don't know if you saw me whenever he was telling this story. Any anything that's to do with children, I I I I don't know. It makes me sad and happy to hear that he's okay. So yeah, I can't. Yeah, I'm I'm great. actually gonna order your book. So I'm, I'm glad I found out about you. Oh. Yeah. All right. So what do you want to know first, Travis? <laughs> well, you, you've you've come a long way in in the hair salon field, but. You're, you're now branching off into some other areas and you know a little bit before the the show we were kind of joking around like you didn't you know a year and a half ago you didn't see yourself as a technologist right not and, at all <laughs> you know uh, love to hear more about your project and the different things that you've got going on so I'll, I'll let you just run with uh, your different um, your, your project how about that Okay. So, yes, I'm Tracy Napotnik. First of all, thank you for having me. I love your program that you always do. Um, I've been in the salon industry for 28 years now. I've owned my own salon for 20, and I'm pivoting. And whenever I say that, I always think of the friends thing whenever he's like, pivot. We, you know what I mean? Do you remember that one? <laughs> and I really feel that that's where I am at in my life. Uh, COVID really changed everything for me. I never thought of myself being anywhere else. And so when we were all home, I started a thing called salontraining.com, which was for the beauty industry for trainers coming on. One thing led to another. I fell in love with the software and behind the scenes, and, and I've always loved marketing. So we started a new project, which I'm excited about. It's called cambriacounty.com, and that is showcasing and helping to get awareness. And I liked what you said, RL, about, you know, that's the purpose, getting awareness for people. And so I'd love to have you on and interview you on our thing about your book, too. So that's what it's going to be, collectively helping people. No matter the more places that you can be seen, I think the better for your business. And it should never be like, oh, you have to be on this one or on this one or this one. Let's just like everybody together. I think that's the cool thing. And that's what CambryCounty.com was built for, it's to showcase all the different businesses in the area, all the events, the attractions, jobs, rentals. And like I mentioned, we just opened it last week. So when you go on there, you're going to see a few in each category. And that's where we started with. And now we're actually, um, March 15th is our grand opening. We're going to have all kinds of prizes. Everybody's welcome. Uh, it's going to be live on our Facebook group. And we're giving away like gift certificates from tons of businesses. And then we will be promoting ourselves through like Thunder in the Valley, Ethnic Fest, Cambry County um, Fair, all kinds of different places this year. So, and we have free listings, which is what we wanted to start out with for every nonprofit will have a free listing. Every person that wants to have an event, whether it's a basket party or something for a fire hall, that's a free listing. And then jobs can actually have a free listing or as, as low as $8 a month we're charging for job listings instead of, instead of like 300 other places. Not that you shouldn't be in other places as well. Uh, and then the business listings, some for as low as $149 for the entire year. We wanted to make this super affordable. I know in business myself how tough it is to all the rising cost. I think that's something that a lower cost for everybody in the community can come together. And then we'll also have all kinds of contests and stuff on there too. So our first one is gonna be helping to donate money to the Humane Society. So that starts on the 15th where you can showcase your favorite pet photo and we'll do you know kind of stuff like that all year long. That, that's awesome. That's awesome that you branched into that focus. Uh, you, you, you saw a gap in, in the market and decided that you had the technology, right? So you were building out one platform and saw the functionality and the usability in taking that and applying it to other, other platforms. Um, <clears throat> to offer these types of things, job listings and events and some other wonderful things that you offer within the uh, CambriaCounty.com platform. So, you know, I, I applaud you for seeing that 
having that bigger picture in mind. And, you know, it takes a, uh, a sharp mind, a creative mind, to be able to make that transition. So uh, kudos to you for seeing that. I think sometimes it can get us in trouble when we have the creative mind because we're like blah, 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 like this and no one understands it whenever you're starting it and you don't even understand it when you're starting it sometimes and then somehow the pieces all start to match. They so. just everything just starts fitting, you know, mm-hmm. and having that vision and then you have like these aha moments, right? I mean, you you want to you know give us an insight in some of your aha moments? I don't even know where to start with that. My life was kind of insane for the last two years. I think I was telling you before, um, I had to switch my kids' schedule. All the, I had to keep them up till 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning, and they're in elementary school, so that they would sleep till 12 o'clock in the afternoon so I could work in the morning last year when I cyber schooled them. And it was really like the mom guilt feeling. So when the aha moment was when I talked to um, – their their doctor about this i said am i am i gonna mess up my kids like having them up to one o'clock in the morning and then sleeping till the afternoon he's like you're fine honey he said they're still getting as many hours as they need he said that's the most important thing is if they're getting the consistent hours so the aha moment was like just know you got to do what you got to do as long as it's you know taking care of your family and and putting it all together and it's okay whatever works is going to work as long as you're doing it you know safe so that's my aha moment just being okay with it just just being um settled you know comfortable in your own skin you know and and knowing that your your eggs are covered and you know you're you're not doing things wrong and and you know making adjustments were 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 necessary um Mm -hmm. to not only accommodate you but you know your life and your kids so it's juggling that balance uh between the two that's that's really powerful I think a lot of people struggle with that, having that work-life balance, you know, am I putting too much time in here, you know, am I putting too much time in there, and things get offset a bit, right? Yes. So, that's awesome that you were able to find that, um, find that balance that I feel like most people struggle with. Mm. So. Yeah. Where uh, you're in so many different places right now, Trey. So you've got a few different Facebook groups as well. Yes, uh, CambryCounty.com is pretty much where we're focusing right now. We just started that not too long ago, uh, so that's the Facebook group. It's it's open to anybody, but we really promote people that work, shop, live in Cambry County, or want to see what's going on there. If you visit it, you know that kind of stuff. So that's awesome. That's awesome. And so people can find you at cambriacounty.com. And um, anything else before before we switch? Uh, No, I'm excited to hear everybody else's story. I love hearing about other people, too. I think that excites me to hear what other people are doing. It really is exciting because they're doing some awesome stuff. So on that note, uh, it was great chatting, Trace. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. And we are getting ready to pivot to our next guest so it is great that to diversify your footprint and our next guest helps many uh, of her clients expand their footprint on Amazon uh, something that uh, many people I'm sure during the pandemic have uh, purchased at least one item from Amazon so uh, with that being said let me uh, get where find Kelsey, Miss Kelsey Aluzzi. She will be joining us. Uh, let's see here. How you doing, Kelsey? I am good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is awesome. Everybody's yeah. story so far have been really, really great. Absolutely. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think we're all excited to hear your story and, um, you know, how you've transitioned into the role with the, uh, that you have with Goldmates, right? Yes, yes. Goalmates is uh, my main project right now, but how I got there is an interesting story, I suppose. So, um, yeah, my name is Kelsey. I am from the Johnstown-ish area of Pennsylvania. And um, about three years ago, I started my own Amazon business with the help of my husband. The reason we did that is because we were, we got degrees in college, you know, spent a lot of money on that, went into these fields that we ended up absolutely hating. Um, I should have known, (laughs) well, looking back now, just because my parents both own their own small businesses here in town, 
and I've just grown up watching them interact with people and just build their business and they're still around and healthy today. Um, but after watching them for years and years and years, I should have realized that that was the natural path that I always wanted to take. So once I started to have to work in a hospital and just having a set schedule and being away from my two little kids at the time, um, it was just heartbreaking. And like Tracy said, that mom guilt eats you alive. So we started to look into ways to make money online and um, we were led to Amazon initially. So we started very small. We got this little course and then we learned some strategies from there. Um, initially, we just started like buying items at Walmart clearance and just flipping them for a profit on Amazon. And we did that for about a year and we did really well, but we were exhausted because <laughs> it was just a bunch of running around to stores. Um, my husband was able to quit his full-time job. I had quit way before that just to be able to be home with the kids. And we quit and we went full-time on it. Then COVID hit, everything exploded and it was insane. Um, we had simultaneously launched our coffee brand, which is called Tomorrow's Coffee, if anybody likes coffee around here. <laughs> um, it's organic, fair trade, and bird friendly. We can talk about that another time though, but we launched all that and it all exploded and we were just like, oh my gosh, okay, so we can make we can make this work. Um, so we went through a period of trying to systematize that business and we were sourcing all these different products and trying to find things that were easy to acquire um because the supply chain was a mess and eventually we moved into the direction of wholesale so we have i don't know we have like 40 some wholesale accounts now we have our own warehouse space in which we were able to bring on my husband's brother as our warehouse manager and it's just been an adventure ever since um meanwhile to build another stream of income while we're growing that business i started doing some freelance consulting on like upwork and helping other um other brands build their businesses on Amazon and stuff. So now as of January, I'm officially Goalmates LLC and I um, reach out to clients of very small mom and pop shops all the way to multi-million dollar sellers per year, um, helping them build their brands on Amazon, Walmart, and even a little bit of Shopify too. But just starting this journey has done so much for my family because me and my husband get to be home with the kids. We homeschool them. We are all for non-traditional education. So I was like cheering for you, Tracy, when you said you had to alter your schedule because I know how that goes for sure. Um, but yeah, so now we're living. We're in the works of creating the life that we've always wanted to create. And it's just looking good from here, I guess. <laughs> that, that is awesome. Um, yeah, being able to, you know, again, have that balance, right? That, that's exciting stuff. So mm -hmm. what, uh, you know, dealing the line of products, what are some fun products that you've, that you've helped list and grow? Well, in our own store, my most favorite, of course, is our coffee, but um, we also developed this other product that is a blanket and a book combination for kids. So on the blanket, it has um, like all these little dinosaurs all over in this pretty scene. And then in the book, it's like, find the yellow dinosaur who's playing in the leaves or something. It's like this cute little rhyming. So it's like a bedtime activity that the parents can do with their kid before bed, lay out the blanket and then they play, you know, I spy with the dinosaur. So that's probably my favorite. Everything else is pretty boring that we sell. So <laughs> yeah. You have any quick tips? Ooh, if, quick tips. If I'm, if I'm getting ready for a meeting with you, what is like one number thing, number one thing that you're like, you need to have this thing in place in order to meet with me. Okay. Well, I guess for me, it's just having definitive goals. One of the most frustrating things is when you get someone on a call with you and they don't really know what they want for their business. And sure, I can help you kind of set those goals, but ultimately it's not my business. I'm just helping you, right? So I want someone who's got like their six month goals and their year goals, at least roughly that we can work with and fine tune. Uh, otherwise it's kind of just super frustrating. Hence, cool mates. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that, that's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, anything else where, so where can we find you at Kelsey? I guess the best place would be my website, which is Goalmates, and it doesn't end in S, it ends in Z. So G-O-A-L-M-A-T-E-Z.com. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with, with us. And uh, let's see if we can get Carlos. Carlos, you uh, ready for us? Let's see. 
Here he is. Yes, sir. What's going on, Travis? How are you doing? Good, good. Let me uh, get you pinned up here, man. Sure thing. I love everyone's stories, by the way. Nice to hear all about you, RL, and, and Tracy and Kelsey. It's been awesome. Yeah, absolutely. They're awesome people. Awesome people. So, Carlos, where are you at, man? Uh, I'm in Tulum at the moment. I've been here in Mexico for the last six months. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely loving it. We're about to have a child out here, and she'll be coming any week. We, we're naming her Zanaya, so we're super pumped. And I plan to raise my family here in, in Tulum. I absolutely love the energy, and everything is just happening the way that it's supposed to. It's, it's very magical. I don't know how else to explain it, so I'm yeah. pretty pumped. Yeah. yeah, it's it's wonderful whenever pieces start falling into place, and it sounds like you know you've got a wonderful setup down in in Tulum, Mexico. But you know, where we actually met wasn't in Mexico, was it? We we met at an entree event with one of our friends, Michael Mara. Uh, if, if anybody's interested, they can head over to entre.com, e n t r e dot com. I'll get throw throw him some. Uh, some some cred, shout out cred. Some yeah, shout awesome. outs. yeah he's wonderful at bringing people together and he's got a wonderful platform over there too so a uh, little bit of uh some some insider insider juice there but yeah man we we hit it off at one of mike's events and we just kept in touch uh so what are you what have you got going on down in tulum man yeah, I, I will never forget that, by the way. The Entre event was epic in Pittsburgh. I lived there for about a year before moving out to, you know, before, actually before COVID. Uh, and it, it was just a crazy time. But now here in Tulum, the reason I came out here was two things, actually. I have family here and they're building re- real estate, working with some of the literally biggest companies that you can deal with in real estate, like Benin Farina um, out here in in Tulum, they're creating a place called Aleo Umay, and my background in marketing, and I've, I've worked with companies like Nissan doing their car dealership marketing. I've worked with Toyota, luxury car dealerships, solar companies. I've, I, I, my, my industries that I've been involved with are very, are vast, but it's the same concept of branding. It's the same concept of choosing your target audience, paid advertising. So with this skill set, I, I knew because I've already sold properties, even while I was living in LA when I was there, I sold the property here in Tulum. So I was like, you know what? Worst case scenario, I am, I'm, I'm always gonna be there with my family and I love that and I love being by the beach and I can run my marketing agency. So no matter what, I'm gonna love it. What I didn't know is that I would be investing in all these different streams of passive income. So I have two automated Amazon stores. I have another automated Walmart store and an automated Facebook store, automated Forex account. So I have all these different streams of passive revenue that have allowed me to have more freedom to where I could really think about, okay, where do I want my family? You know, where, where do I want this to go? How do I want to raise my child at the same time? Where can I actually put my energy that I'm really passionate about that I love? And I found that to be in in art. I found it to be specifically with NFTs and in crypto, because if you take a look at a lot of the NFT projects that are currently out there, it's really just a photo, maybe a game behind it. If you're lucky, some connection to the metaverse, whatever it might be. However, there's no real world impact that's being created other than just another product or service. And so for me coming to Tulum, the second main reason is because I knew that there, there is a lot of room in the cleaning and, and, and regenerative aspects of Tulum, because I don't know if you, uh, everyone watching this knows this, but the, the population of Tulum is double what it regularly is at all times because of tourism. And they just never had the infrastructure to handle so much trash, so much waste, so much like we're just filling up the ocean. It's so it's so sad to see. So for me, I knew I was going to come in here and I was going to figure out a way to connect with the business owners, connect with the with the government, connect with whoever I might have to, so that I could actually start making some movement and turning these trashes and plastic into some type of reusable construction uh, material or or different products. And in that period of time, just how I was mentioning, Tulum, you meet incredible people. 
I met um, the owner of Pet Gas. His name's Chucho. And if you look at Pet Gas, P-E-T-G-A-S, look at what they've done. We're turning plastic into fuel and we're going to be taking this eco-friendly fuel and we're going to be distributing it, uh, distributing it, distributing it across Mexico. And uh, every single week we have an amazing crowd of people just coming, picking up plastic from the beach. The next day we turn it into fuel and we're planning to just create this huge system where we can drive all of the plastic to us, create an eco-friendly fuel and all of the people that purchase an NFT because they partner with Gorilai NFT, which that's the project that I'm working out. It's a huge operation. We have about 10 people just for this project, which is why I love NFTs as well is it's really building a, a business. You have to build a brand. You have to build a community. You have to educate people. What is an NFT? How do I buy one? And not only that, but you have to have your pitch. And for us, it's actually about changing the world and, and reversing the damage that we've already done and making some good out of it and turning that plastic. And by the way, there's no emissions, no carbon, anything in that process. And you can take a look on YouTube or pet gas and how they, how they curate that plastic. But this is one of the best solutions that we have people in Bangladesh, people in different countries that are now wanting to adopt this and, and use the science, use the, you know, the, the, the outlay of everything so that they can just copy and paste one of a pet gas facilities out there and start doing the same thing. So we have a, a worldwide vision to, to truly impact the fuel and, and the plastic and the cleaning, what we can do with that, taking literal trash and turning it into treasure in some way or another. And in the NFT space and with my marketing background, inspiring other people and inspiring other NFT and crypto collections to show them the good that's possible from this and the real life utility that you can create, not just in the metaverse or a game or another just, you know, piece of art. But the next project, I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. And then I know this is a long winded answer, but the next project, we already have people that are giving us the land. Like I mentioned, my uncle, he owns hundreds and hundreds of hectares. We have other partners, the real estate developers that they have plenty of land and they're looking to give it to us. So we're just choosing at this point, where do we want the land to be? We're creating an NFT that that money from the NFT will then fund the construction of this land. Construction will be paid to a group of people that are willing to accept crypto as payment. So none of it will even be in fiat. And this 12 apartment or 14 apartment unit building will be Airbnb. That rental income is then a portion of it is tokenized and all of the NFT holders will then receive a, a portion of that token every single day. So they're making passive income, just holding a, a NFT, doing it for good movements, doing it for eco-friendly projects. And yeah, I, I've been obsessed with that every single day. I, I, I love the, uh, First off, I, I think we we connected on our on our attitudes, our mindsets. You know, we you know having a, a bigger vision. I think that's incredibly important. You know, Kelsey had mentioned it earlier that you know the hardest thing is whenever people come to her and they don't even have any uh, any goals or a, a vision for their company. So, you know, hearing your vision laid out like you do is incredibly powerful and I, I think it's uh wonderful for people to just hear honestly hear you talk about your vision because then it gives them a better understanding of, of a bigger vision um that can not only impact an area but you know have a have a, a global impact eventually as well so you know kudos to you brother i appreciate that um, yeah, I'm man. grateful. I'm grateful just to, to be here and share about it. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things, another thing that you and I have in common is we're both kind of on this NFT track. Um, what What is the uh, name of your NFT? Gorilai. So it's like G O R one R I L L A E NFT. And <clears throat> let me, uh, let me show you. We actually just met. I don't know if you, you know, K camp, the rappers, K Camp or Genius, but we met these people in Tulum the, like yesterday. And then we've been hanging out like all day. And now they're gonna put it on to their celebrities and their their rappers and they have millions of people. So that audience, like we're gonna sell out. And it was just within the matter of a couple of weeks that I met the team. I decided, you know, we decided together that we we're gonna make something happen. And now 
February 19th is when we're minting and we're it, it's already on track to selling out. We have more than a week. So it's a beautiful feeling. That's awesome. That's awesome. Congrats. Thank you. So, yeah, oh, I was going to show you, by the way, a gorilla. I know it's a little bit of a uh, spelled funny. That's what it looks like. Nice. So the NFT Galactic Gorilla Gang. Yes, sir. That's us. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So, are, yeah. are is that are they uh, are you selling on Ethereum or Polygon or some other coin? Yeah, that's a great question. So we're we're huge Solana enthusiasts. We love Solana just because of the technology behind it. Uh, a lot of people, and there's some recent tweets about it that people think Solana is going to surpass Ethereum, and whether or not that's true. There's just a lot of people that, that believe this. And if you look at the technology behind it, Solana on their website themselves show you actually how to build out a node and everything you need and you know what Solana is looking for. They want more nodes to be developed on their platform. And so, like just to give you an example, it takes it takes about the energy of two Google searches to send Solana. And if I wanted to send you Solana right now, it would like I could send it to you and in ten seconds you'll see it versus Ethereum, right? There's gas fees and then you have to wait a little bit and there's over 300,000 nodes. So they've scaled quickly. Uh, and what that means for the NFT world, you need a node in order to mint something. So like if you're an artist and you're, you're like, I want to make a collection of 8,000 and sell it. Well, you're going to have to go through some type of mint site in order to distribute it to all of your, your audience. And there's, there's places like Magic, Eden, there's places like OpenSea, Solanart, uh, Immutable X, different places where you can choose to share this NFT, but they will take a percentage and it's usually around 30% more or less. And unless you have your own node and then you can mint on your own servers and have your own mint site, then you can, you know, literally it's just the raw cost. And so we're looking to develop our own node and we already have like we had another meeting the other day that a team will, this big, you know, team of musicians will be paying us $30,000 and giving us 15% of their mint sales. And they're planning to do a $10,000 collection. So they're paying us up, up front and they'll see potentially $5 million plus million in revenue. And from that, because we'll have the node, right? Now we get to keep that 15 full percent, but now we're looking to expand that into Solana and, and, building all the nodes so that people come to us and we're cornering the Solana market because a lot of people from Ethereum are now moving to this chain because there's there's it's eco-friendly, first of all, Ethereum and Bitcoin, as you all know, and Elon Musk talked about it, is the, the carbon emissions that are created and all the energy that it takes for these transactions to get processed. Solana can handle so much more for, for such less energy and it's still very secure. Um, obviously people from Ethereum and all the, the developers and, and even the investors are now pouring slowly. Well, quickly, I should say, if you look at the numbers, OpenSea on a daily basis, selling NFTs, the OpenSea is a marketplace to buy and sell NFTs. Every single day, they're, they're doing over $150 million in transactions. And Magic Eden, which is the Solana market, they're moving around 10 to $12 million a day. So in comparison to Ethereum, Solana is a little bit small, but it's totally uh, catching up. If you look at the statistics just in the last 90 days, that's why we're huge believers of Solana. We plan to corner that market within the technology side, the marketing side, the branding and strategic plays, the celebrities, and then we're just selling projects out. Hopefully, you know, well, we're always doing and vetting our, our, our projects, but we only look to work with good utility projects, eco-friendly projects, sustainable projects, things that will allow us to reverse the damage that we've done to, you know, to the earth, not add more to it. That is amazing and very informative, Carlos. Um, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> love to have your input on, on these, you know, it, a lot of, this is a new territory, you know, um, very young uh, as far as, you know, how many years it's been around. NFTs, uh, fairly young fairly young it's, you know they are uh, <laughs> I like to call them they're, they're a utility of crypto you know so if you're investing in crypto now there's uh, more things available and you're seeing you know the evolution of 
you know, Ethereum, and we've talked about Solana, and we also, you know, Polygon is another uh, coin that is, is used. Um, there's some also some other platforms to uh, purchase NFTs from. You have OpenSea, as Carlos mentioned, and we, uh, we listed our platform or our NFT on the uh, Crypto.com platform. So uh, awesome! You know, I did see that they just released their marketplace. Yeah, they just released an NFT marketplace. So <clears throat> uh, very powerful. You know, there are some other uh, marketplaces to buy and sell crypto. Uh, I think you're going to end up seeing the emergence, the emergence of a lot of them, and you're also going to see the collapse of a lot of them as well, right? Absolutely. So, you know, Absolutely. it's you know, people. A lot of people are calling. Oh, there's going to be a bust. There's going to be a bust. Well, there's going to be a bust with any market. We had a bust with the real estate market. We've had a bust with the crypto market. We've had a bust with the dot com <laughs> market, right? Uh -huh. That was what early 2000s when everything just went poof, like what happened you know only the strong survive and you know uh, I have a, a, a getting started website for NFTs it's called uh, the NFT beginner .com. I think I sent you over the, mm -hmm. yeah, I reviewed the, it. the guide I love the it's definitely worth everyone's time to take a look at yeah head over to the NFT beginner .com and uh, grab the getting started guide. I talk about the importance of utilities. Uh, as Carlos had mentioned, you know, his utilities in, you know, sustainable earth, you know, and actually having something that backs the NFT, incredibly important whenever you're, you're looking at these different projects to invest in. You know, some of them are, are, are pumped up by celebrities. Some, some of them are pumped up by the, uh, the community behind them. Some of them are pumped up by just being cool artwork. Um, totally. So they, yeah, and, and that's why I really I can't stress more for everyone to do their you know do their own research on any collection. And now there's a, a need and a service that we're actually going to be going through where we'll be getting our team doxxed and it just validates you know that we're who we say we are. We, you know, we live where we say we live. We're doing what we say we're doing. All, there's all these validators that I think you're going to see a lot more of too, just to kind of correct what has been happening with a lot of people rug pulling or being, uh, they haven't been transparent. And yeah, the, uh, with the saturation of any market, just as Travis was saying, this happens in any industry. It's, it's very important to be cautious right now. And just do your research on any any project. Don't make emotional decisions. And uh, and yeah, no, I think that's and absolutely. There's a fun. lot of money to be made in in this uh, right now. You know, you oh, can yeah. buy an NFT for for a hundred dollars and sell it for a few hundred dollars, a few yeah. thousand dollars if you're the right person. Exactly, and the beautiful thing is it's all on blockchain, so. We, we have a track record of our Ethereum plays and our Solana plays, but my first flip was I, I took, it was about $1,500 and I invested in, into Spooky Boys Country Club collection, which if you can look at it, you can look at the market history. I sold maybe a little too early. I, there's a bit more of a peak, but I sold enough to where I turned that 1500 into a little over $6,000. And that's where I saw, okay, this is, this, there's something here and you know I stay dedicated to that um, to the point where my most recent ethereum flip at least was in the laid back llama project which but I only put seven hundred dollars into that one and I got over forty two hundred dollars back right and so for me I just focus on the one or two good projects a month I don't need to be you know I don't need to like be obsessed even though I am but with my own projects but <laughs> You know, with, when it comes to flipping, I just look at, okay, is the community real here? Does the docs, does the team have docs? Do they have good credibility in the past? What's their resume? I'll look at their LinkedIn's. I'll look at everything and then I'll, I'll make my bet on one or two. And then I know, okay, even if it doesn't 4X or 5X, I can at least, because I, I'm always working to get the whitelist. You're familiar with the whitelist, Travis. And, and for anybody new to NFTs, it's like, I don't invest in anything that I don't have the whitelist in because it's my way of uh, mitigating my risk. And so 
you know, I'll get whitelisted for these two projects. And then I'll see that in the pre-sale, it's already nearly sold out and I have my guaranteed spot. So I'll just swoop one up uh, or two. So then I could just sell, you know, sell one for profit at the peak and maybe hang on to another that maybe the value will increase even more. Um, and I've already made all of my money back. So, so yeah, th that's essentially my strategy. Um, when it comes to taking my due diligence on every project and then also knowing where I'm happy with taking profit because I also manage clients' monies too. So, you know, for me, I'm, I don't get upset if a project jumps a hundred X, even though I took my profit at four X because for my clients, they've, that's, that's, uh, you know, the result of, of the day, you know, is we've already three X their money and I'm happy with that. So, yeah, just know your strategy, do your research and, um, and do a lot of homework. I mean, it, it takes yeah. a, from me having the marketing and background perspective, I, I could go deep and understand what it takes, what type of community needs to be there mm -hmm. <clears throat> in order for it to be a really solid project. But I don't think a lot of people have those lens. And so I recommend just learning as much as possible before you put any money into the market. Yeah. Man, that's, that's awesome. You know, it's great to have that type of insight, you know, love to have you back and pick your brain and, you know, do some, some deeper dives. Cause I, I know that, you know, you're answering a lot of questions, but it's leaving me with more questions. So. Yeah, man, no, I appreciate you having me on here and I'm sure we'll do some more. I can't wait to hear the rest yeah. of everyone's stories. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Carlos. I, I appreciate it. Uh, where Leo, lastly, where do you want, people to go to check you out yeah you can follow me on instagram carlos h martinez and then obviously gorilai the project that we're working on support us there that would be uh, amazing we appreciate all the support we've been growing so quickly so definitely get your whitelist spot while they i think there's like a hundred left out of a thousand so there's still some time it's gorilai g-o-r-i-l-l-a-e nft and yeah, send us a message. We're, we're, we're friendly. We don't buy it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carlos. I appreciate it, man. Let's talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. All right. And that wraps up this special edition of the Social Share Club with Trav Talks. Uh, so blessed to have so many awesome, awesome guests on, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Uh, quick note from our sponsors, if you need a website or have your online goals that you want to get meet, hit me up at uh, over at trav.media. That's H-E-T-P-S colon forward slash forward slash trav.media and talk to us about your website and branding goals to set up your next company online. You can check us out uh, over at Trav Media Group on Facebook and Instagram as well. And uh, with that being said, I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their day. Talk to you soon. Bye. Take care, everybody. Have a good day. Invest in your company.